Greetings, my fellow YouTube nurses. Welcome to the new medically affiliated channel. It's just channel number two, Nurse Mendoza 2. Don't forget to subscribe, hit that like button, and let's just get down to the nitty gritty. What is hepatic encephalopathy? We all know it's, it has to do with the liver, but what does your liver do first and foremost? It detoxifies, it coagulates, and all that good stuff. And that's just the beginning of what the liver does. Through the end stages of liver failure, it could lead to hepatic encephalopathy. Now those are known causes from drugs, it can be caused from infection, it can be caused from your food intake and so forth. But we're gonna talk about what you're gonna do as a nurse when they do come in. Boom, you get a phone call, boom, patient's on the floor, they're in a coma, they're really having, you know, barely breathing, um, and uh, they're not really able to communicate, they're disoriented and so forth. Well, what are you gonna do? They come in, in the ER, what are the labs and tests and diagnosis you're gonna check for, and what's your assessments? So first and foremost, the diagnostic you're gonna check for is CT or MRI of the brain. You wanna make sure there's no bleeding or so forth that could happen, because when you have hepatic encephalopathy, you're gonna see uh, maybe bleeding and so forth. So you want to make sure you look for that. After the labs, you want to go ahead and do CBC, H and H. That could be dropped. So you um, you also want to look to see if there's internal bleeding or blood loss from anything. So you might have to transfuse blood or so forth. Maybe of course platelets or uh, uh, plasma and so forth. So the other thing you're going to look for is chem panel. You have to look through your electrolytes. They're going to be in balance. You're also going to have to look for uh, your BN and creatinine. The reason why BN and creatinine are going to be elevated is because when you have liver failure, it's going to change the circulation blood flow through your kidneys. So you, they won't be perfused properly. What happens with that? You're not going to be able to urinate. Well, when that happens, that's when you look at BN and creatinine. Those are very important. And so um, BN and creatinine, if those are elevated, your kidney's not able to function right. If you can't pee, you're going to have toxins building up such as nitro binding um, uh, proteins such as uh, from food that you eat, and those are toxins. So that's the number one sign too. Another one you can look for is uh, prothrombin, PT, PTT, and INR. Those are another blood levels you have to look for. Remember, your liver detoxifies and it coagulates, meaning it clots. Now, you're not gonna be able to co uh, coagulate and clot properly if you have liver failure. So, they're gonna check for that. Those are probably gonna be elevated and so forth. So then, um, another one you're gonna also check for is ammonia levels, that's very, very key. The reason why ammonia levels are going to be high in someone with hepatic encephalopathy is accumulation of toxin substances build up in your bloodstream. Remember that. So they're not able to remove or you can't urinate it out. So of course, what does ammonia do to you? It's a toxin. It makes you lethargic, tired, and it can turn into a coma. So it's very important to check that. And of course, the treatment for that, you're going to also, you know, well, you know, before the treatment, the assessment part for someone coming in, I mean, I'm telling you, their eyes are going to be jaundiced, their skin might be jaundiced. I swear I had a patient that looked just like this, super yellow highlighted marker, all straight yellow. Uh, they're going to have a pot belly, ascites is going to occur, they're going to have basically accumulation of fluids on their belly, it's going to be firm, it's going to be distended. You're going to see uh, accumulation of fluid in their lower extremities, maybe upper extremities, they're going to be generalized edema, plus two, plus three, maybe possibly plus four. Um, and then you're also going to see um, tendon reflexes that are going to be exaggerated. So those are all things you're going to look for for someone coming in for hepatic encephalopathy. Now, uh, the antibiotics that you're going to give to them, uh, or the treatment, I'm sorry, is going to be antibiotics. Um, you're going to give them lactulose. We all hate it as a nurse. Makes them poop, 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 poop. But lactulose is actually absorbed in the smaller intestine. And what that does, it brings down the ammonia levels, which is a toxin. Remember that. And once that comes down, they become more oriented and they become more with it. So that's another plus, but we hate it because they poop like no other, dude. It's like a straight code brown every two seconds. The other one thing that's going to help for them too is a diet. You've got to give them probiotics. That's going to help change um, uh, their, it's a branched amino uh, acids. So you definitely need that for them. Um, what's the other treatment going to be? Also, a lot of rest. They're going to be in the hospital and so forth. So you do get better. Hepatic encephalopathy, like I said, is a later stage of liver failure. Anyways, y'all, I'm trying to make it condensed, short and sweet, uh, and hard to beat, so uh, that's what happens. Anyway, I was just trying to break down what hepatic encephalopathy, what treatments, what assessments, and what diagnostics were ordered, and what we do for the patient to get better. Don't forget to subscribe, hit that like button, and throw some questions on there, y'all, on what you guys want me to do next for my next advanced, at least critical thinking video. My fellow YouTube nurses, peace.